young lady there. Uh, what is the inductive reactance of a, well, what's the reactance of an inductor? What's the equation for that? 2 pi FL. 2 pi FL. So, So, somebody tell me what reactive means now. We defined it before the uh, uh, break. Somebody have a go at reactive. All right, go back one. Somebody have a go at resistive. What does resistance do? Sort of AC resistance, kind of, kind of. And I told you the magic of the DC world is actually quite dull, but the AC world is really exciting. Why? Because there's lots of maths associated with it, and when you talk to other engineers about it, it's the magic thing that nobody can understand. Well, in now, I can understand really. Okay, so we looked at a capacitor and we saw a capacitor, if I feed high frequency through, will do what? Short It'll basically go into, into the action mode. <laughs> so it'll sort of behave as if it were a straight wire for high frequency. And what about for low frequency? Open it'll sort of be an open circuit, won't it? So it'll sort of. Uh, Bit like this, so the capacitor will be equivalent to what well, really just two points with a gap in them, right? Which it is really anyway. Okay, so that's the capacitor, and the capacitive reactor is one upon two pi Fc. Remember, what I want to look at now is inductors, and with an inductor, an inductor is a coil of wire, right? can have metal in the middle, which will increase, increase its flux density, but let's just imagine it's an air-wound coil, like so. A cylindrical coil, could be a flat-wound coil, uh, could be lots of different shapes. So, so I've got a coil of wire, and let's say for the sake of argument that that coil of wire is 1 ohm per, per metre actually quite high resistance but that's one ohm per metre and the coil so I took off a piece of wire a metre about like that I wound it around the pencil and so that should have a resistance of one ohm right yeah so what would you expect to happen <coughs> if I did this so the same circuit as I had before so I've got V in Remember we're talking AC, if we were talking DC, what would this look like to DC? <laughs> well it wouldn't be a 1 ohm resistor, wouldn't it, because we said it got 1 ohm per metre, but it would just be a straight piece of wire. So that would just be equivalent to uh, a small resistor like that. So if I put in here this coil, and that's the air up here, and in here I put this resistor, like so. What would you expect to happen if I put in here low frequency? Now by low frequency you can just assume DC, that's the simplest lowest frequency, right? Yeah. So if I put just DC in there, or a very low frequency, what would you expect to happen? Short circuit. Hmm? Short circuit. Well, you're right in the respect that this wouldn't really look like anything was in the, in the way at all. So this would... Allow it to pass. It would allow it to pass, right? It would be conductive. Yeah, at low frequency it would be conductive. So what's here would also be here. So if I put 10 volts peak to peak here, I would get 10 volts 
uh, big to big here. If it were low frequency, what do you think is going to happen at high frequency? This is slightly trickier to get your head around than the capacitors. What do you think would happen at high frequency? So now V in is a high frequency, depends what your time constants are, but let's say it's a megahertz or something. So this point here is high <coughs> frequency. What do you think is going to happen? As we increase the frequency, the You're perfectly correct, uh, but take a step back from that. Why is it doing that? That's right, according to the equation, and this is the magic way you use equations. So the inductive reactance, or the equivalent resistance of the inductor, is 2 pi FL. So 2 doesn't change, pi doesn't change, L is fixed because you wound it and cut it and put it in the circuit. So the only variable left is F. As F increases, the reactance increases. The AC resistance increases. Yeah? The AC resistance is increasing. What that means is that this is what? So as I increase the frequency, this is going to let it through more or block it more? Good. So this is going to block here. So what does that mean the output is going to look like? Well, if it's completely blocked, it means that actually it's open circuit. That isn't there. It's blocked everything. So what does that mean the output looks like? Well, the only thing left here, we've got zero volts here and we've got a resistor across it. If I drew you a circuit like this, clearly that's also zero volts, right? Yeah. Okay. So at low frequency, this just looks like the input waveform, and at high frequency, it drops down to zero volts. Not a graph. So here we are at low frequency, and here we are at high frequency. Um, here's the amplitude, and this is high frequency here. So what we're saying is at low frequency, we just see the input waveform, which is obviously what we feed in, be in, and at high frequency, we see the zero volt switches here. So what we have is something like that. Rather, in our filter, it's going to look something like that. Now if you look at the circuit, remember the capacitor here and the resistor here was a what? High pass, wasn't it? Yeah? So it actually looked the opposite of this. But when we put the inductor here and the resistor here, it actually looks like a low pass. So we can achieve the same thing using an inductor instead of a capacitor. Almost exactly the same thing. Now we know from the capacitor the reason that if you like the electrons, they're not jumping the gap, but they're electrostatically uh, attracting and repelling the ones on the other side of the gap. So that's where we get this ability to have a frequency dependency to it. Where's the energy going when it blocks? Because this is a bit of wire with a 1 ohm resistor, or equivalent to a 1 ohm resistor. What's happening? My wave on them feeding in, where's that going? It's still there, I'm feeding it in on feeding. This is 1 ohm at DC, but it doesn't come out there. Where's it gone? Heat is a reasonable uh, thing to say, but it's not in this particular case. Although heat will be something which is manifested. Where's it going? It's an electromagnet. Right? Remember from school when you were took a coil of wire and you put a bar magnet inside, momentarily you just see a little spike as so you generate an electric current. What you're doing is you're putting an alternating electric current 
into a boil, which means actually what you're getting is you're getting field lines running down the inside of this. So you're charging an electromagnet. That's where it's going. So once the frequency gets beyond a certain point, all of that energy that you're putting in there just comes out as a magnet. And of course you get it back on when the AC waveform goes the other way. Okay, so what I want you to do for the next 10 minutes is I want you to design a circuit, but this time using an inductor in here. You've got your design equation, well you know the impedance for it, and amazingly, what do you think the equation is for the cutoff frequency? What do you think it is? So now design me a circuit like this with the inductor as R1 if you like and the resistor as R2 and design me a circuit with a cutoff frequency of 5000 hertz. Okay? You'll find the inductors are under basic components. The values that you use, I'm going to let you do that as a bit of fun. Okay? I would assume that the resistor in this case is the fixed one, and I would just say for sake of argument, make the resistor 4.7K, just to give you a starting point. Okay, plug that into your equation, and work out what the size of the inductor is, find the inductors inside multi-sim, and get that simulated, yeah? Okay, 15 minutes on that.